This was a tweet that came out the following day. All right, I'm ready for the tweet. Let's open it. Oh, he pooped. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Wednesday Checkup. Today, we're gonna be talking about Markiplier's recent plight with the medical system. He had some abdominal stuff going on, which has been troubling him for about half a decade. But in order to do this, I had to bring in a sub, sub, sub specialist. Welcome to the channel, Dr. Austin Chang. What's going on, buddy? Hey, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. My subspecialty is actually in gastroenterology, which is digestive diseases, but then within that, I'm also an advanced endoscopist where I do more complex procedures. You are also a TikTok specialist. <laughs> hey guys, uh, thank you guys so much for caring about uh, what's going on right now. I just wanted to give you a small update. Uh, yesterday, I did have to get surgery done. I have what's called a small bowel obstruction, or I had. It was formed by uh, scar tissue from my previous surgeries that I had uh, before I started YouTube. Do you want to talk about this uh, nasogastric tube he has in? Yeah, as you can imagine, if there's a blockage in the bowel, there's no place for food or liquids to pass through. And even if somebody isn't eating anything by mouth, the stomach, for instance, is naturally secreting a lot of fluid. And even if you think about our mouths and the saliva that we make that we're constantly swallowing, that has no place to go. This tube serves to suction out that liquid so that it actually has a place to go and it doesn't just build up. What he it sounded like he was saying was that he was having the small bowel obstruction to translate into common English terms is his small intestine, which comes right off of the stomach, had an obstruction. He explained that it was from his prior surgery. There was probably some scar tissue that essentially closed off the intestine, preventing food and the liquids from traveling down. And as a result, you start vomiting profusely, you feel awful, your stomach starts expanding, you're bloating, you're uncomfortable. No matter what medicine you give to a patient, unless you either open up the blockage or take all the, the contents of the stomach and the GI system out of the body, you're not gonna stop vomiting. So putting in these NG tubes in patients like this was the number one way to relieve the symptoms and to buy time in order to get them to the procedure. Hey guys, I'm at the hospital right now. I'm fine. I've got an NG tube in my nose right now which drains stuff out of my stomach because I have a small intestine blockage man this is uh, unexpected came out of nowhere but i'm fine it's nothing life-threatening um i don't even think i'm gonna need surgery this time they're just gonna suck it out of me and hopefully that fixes the problem in five years two small bowel obstructions is that common uh, do you i mean I know there are recurrences, especially once you've had um, uh, an intestinal obstruction before and surgery and adhesions. But in his age, is that you, have you seen patients like this? Is it often? You know, I've seen patients like this, but it, there's no predicting when a bowel obstruction can happen again after it's happened once. If it's due to the scar tissue that we were talking about, yeah. you know, it sounds like he might not need surgery this time around. So I don't exactly know if it's the same cause of the obstruction again. I wonder if there's something else going on, like maybe something we call an ileus, where the intestines just slow to move. And in that case, it just needs time to kind of get going again. And we don't want to, you know, add more food or a liquid to it. Um, and it will sort of, we have to figure out why that ileus is happening, but you know, a little bowel rest might help. This is cool for the audience to know, right? They're probably wondering if he can't eat, he can't drink, how is he supposed to stay hydrated? How is he supposed to get calories? You wanna take us through uh, the ways that we can do that? The main way we do that really is through the IV, through a vein. We're able to provide fluids that way. We're able to sometimes even provide nutrition. Some people have issues that prevent them from being able to eat for months on end. And sometimes people have to be on IV nutrition for a long time. I've got good news. Uh, the NG tube has been taken out of my nose and my gut because that's what it does. We did a bunch of tests this morning, a lot of x-rays and a lot of scans and uh, some contrast to see if things were moving through me. And it seemed like things were moving through okay, which is good. So the doc said, we're gonna take it out and observe a little longer. I'm still not allowed to eat anything, but the doc said that if I can have a bowel movement, 
then everything is on the up and up. We're waiting for the bowel movement. We're waiting for the flatulence. It's funny because literally as a med student and as a resident early on, you're documenting like no flatulence as of yet. Like you're waiting for that moment. What's interesting to me is he mentioned the contrast that they're doing, I guess, like swallow studies or is that something you usually do with SBOs? Yeah, I think that if we're suspecting that it's gonna clear up on its own, then we can get an x-ray and have them drink contrast and that contrast will basically be traced through the intestine and make sure it's getting past the point of blockage. This was a tweet that came out the following day. All right, I'm ready for the tweet. Let's open it. Oh, he pooped! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think I saw this trending. Didn't this trend on Twitter? Hashtag he pooped. Hashtag he pooped. Isn't it funny to celebrate a bowel movement? Like people don't think that that happens, but doctors celebrate poops. What do we got six, Sam? The tweets inspired some memes. Okay, we got some memes. Congratulations, this certificate is to commend Mark Edward Fishbach for passing a bowel movement awarded the 3rd of December sign everyone. This is a certificate of poop. You never thought that would come into the conversation. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to come in anyway because I didn't know if it was going to be a problem. But they said they were glad I did, and this is how I know the bowel obstructions are extra dangerous is because they said if I waited, that's usually how people die from bowel obstructions. I wasn't in any danger of dying because I came in way early. It's usually people that have these kinds of pain for bowel obstructions and they wait like a day or two days just to go in. Like if you've got some weird stomach pain, go see a doctor. Like it's, it's, it's probably nothing, but it could also be your intestines exploding. <laughs> okay, I don't want people to think if their stomach hurts for a few hours, their intestines may explode. That's why I think it's so important to have a primary care doctor because if you have an established relationship with a doctor outside of an emergency setting, then you can contact that doctor and say, you know, is this okay? You know, is it okay to not run to the emergency room right away? That's exactly what I would say. That basically it's a triage component that people don't appreciate uh, as much because they don't think about it. And it's natural not to think about it. But we have like a 24 hour answering service like most offices do that I tell my patients like, look, if this continues into tonight or gets worse randomly in the middle of the night, and you're not sure of what to do. Call our number, we'll have a resident who's on call give you a call back. They'll help triage of whether you can wait until an urgent care appointment in the morning or do you have to go to the ER now? Because we can talk through the symptoms, we can talk through uh, your history. You know, in his case, knowing that he has a history of small bowel obstructions, it is wise to come in earlier than later. But maybe in someone who, you know, ate some food and is having some diarrhea and some nausea for, you know, four hours, maybe they don't need to rush to the ER, especially if they have access to a good primary care doc. The first time that it went down or the nurse tried to get it down, it went into my lungs. <laughs> now let me tell you, getting a lube covered plastic tube shoved into your lungs ain't fun at all. And and it was, I, I felt so bad for, for the nurse. I ended up like, I felt bad for the nurse. Like, you know, she shoves it down in my throat and I'm just like, oh. and she pulls it out a little bit, not all the way. So it's like still in my nose. And I'm like, <laughs> I think that was in my lungs. And she's going like, no, no way that was in your lungs. And I'm like, well, listen lady, I, I'm not gonna sue you or anything. Like, I'm just telling you, I'm not an expert at the inside of my lungs or how that feels, but that one in my lungs. Oh my God, stat portable chest x-ray, please. <laughs> you know, if he's coughing and he's not able to tolerate the tube <laughs> placement, it could have gone down the wrong pipe. After you reach the back of your throat, it splits into your esophagus and then the windpipe. So there is a possibility that the tube may have, you know, at least temporarily gone down the wrong tube. Well, that's why, right? Like one of the parts of placing an NG tube is then listening for the stomach, for the, <laughs> the lungs, and making sure you don't hear it in the lungs and you hear it properly in the abdomen, maybe putting a little bulb on there and squeezing some air in. But if he's already like can't and is struggling to breathe, I feel like that's a good enough sign for me clinically to know that I'm not doing the right thing. You know, it was so weird having the internet celebrate me having a bowel movement. I can't believe I just like, I was so, I, I knew it was going to be kind of like that, but I had no idea it was like, you guys are going to make a trend on Twitter or something like that. I was just, Hey, Pooh! We are officially Markiplier fans here. 
Shout out Mark, we're glad you're doing well. Um, if you ever wanna do a try not to laugh medical challenge with us, we're game. Dr. Chang, thank you so much for joining us. All of Dr. Chang's information is gonna be linked down below. Check out all of his social channels. He's an absolute rock star, accurate info. He deals in not only in the hospital side of medicine, but also the social media side of medicine. What goes into that, training other doctors. Truly amazing work. And if you wanna see another great video, check out my video here on the harsh reality of being 800 plus pounds. Actually, the gentleman in this video is the pinned comment. Click here and as always, stay happy and healthy.